Welcome to Developer Ramp Up, a channel dedicated to anybody who wishes to become a software developer or a better software developer. In this video we'll talk about selection sort. Now in computer science selection sort is a sorting algorithm, specifically an in-place and comparison sort, and it has a time complexity of O n square like all the other simple sorting algorithms like insertion sort and bubble sort and therefore it is fairly inefficient on large lists and datasets and generally also performs worse than the similar insertion sort. However, selection sort is noted for its simplicity and it has performance advantages over more complicated algorithms in certain situations, for instance where auxiliary memory is limited. The algorithm divides the input list into two parts, the sublist of items already sorted, which is built up front from left to right, and the sublist of items remaining to be sorted that occupy the rest of that list. Initially, of course, the sorted sublist is empty and the unsorted sublist is the entire input list. The algorithm proceeds by finding the smallest element in the unsorted subset, exchanging or swapping it with the leftmost unsorted element, and therefore it puts it into a sorted order. And the sublist of sorted elements becomes bigger and bigger with each iteration while the sublist of unsorted elements becomes smaller and smaller with each iteration until of course the sublist of unsorted elements becomes empty while the sorted list is the entire list. Now this might sound a little bit complicated so let's take a look into a more graphic explanation on how this algorithm is supposed to work. Let's start with this simple list. We have 10, 15, 7, 20 and 5. And of course we want to sort this list using selection sort. However, before we get really started, I just want to mention once again that selection sort is a simple sorting algorithm and therefore we would need two different loops. The first loop is what we'll call in this presentation first iteration, second iteration and so on, while the second loop, the so-called inner loop, is what we will use in order to compare the numbers. So let's start to implement this algorithm and see exactly how this works. So in the first iteration we start of course with the first element which is 10. What we'll do right now is we'll try to compare 10 with each element in the remaining array. Please note that we said at the beginning in selection sort what we will do is we will use two different type of lists or we can consider these lists containing two parts, a sorted part which should be on the left and an unsorted part which should be on the right. Right now of course our sorted part is empty because we just started with the algorithm. So the first step is to compare 10 with 15 and 10 is less than 15 so nothing to do here. But now we have to compare 10 to 7 and 7 is less than 10 so we would swap the values of these two uh, different elements but we will continue the comparison so we will compare now 7 to 20. Of course 7 is less than 20 so we can proceed and finally we have to compare 7 to 5 and 5 is less than 7 so we have to swap them once again. And what we will do right now is we'll move now this element containing this newest minimum value to the left part of the list. And right now we have also one element in the sorted part of the list. And with this the first iteration is over and we can start the second iteration. Now as said the list on the left part or the part of the list on the left is already sorted so when we continue with the second iteration we do not have to take care anymore of the first element or of the sorted part of the list. So we'll compare 15 to 10 and of course 10 is less than 15 so we will swap the values then 10 to 20 this seems to be right. So finally we compare 10 to 7 and once again we have to switch the values here because 7 is less than 10 and we have to move this element containing this new value to the place from where we started. And right now we have the sorted part of the list which contains two elements. So for the third iteration we start with the third element and we do not have to take care of the left part of the list. So we compare 15 to 20. 15 is less than 20 so this is fine 
and here we have to compare 15 to 10 and 10 is less than 15 so we swap these two values and then we put the element back from where we took it. And now the sorted part of the list contains three elements and we can go further with the fourth iteration. So in the fourth iteration we start with 20 since we do not have to bother with the left part of this list because that left part is already sorted, we know that. So we compare 20 to 15 and of course 15 is less than 20 and we swap the values and put the element back from where we took it. And now we have the sorted part of the list which contains four elements. However, right now we do not have any further elements after 20 with which to compare this list. So this means that we are done sorting. So the list is now totally sorted. We have 5, 7, 10, 15 and 20. So this is how the selection sort algorithm should work. And now let's take a look into how we could do this using C sharp code. And we're back to Visual Studio and we can start coding and see exactly how we can implement this selection sort algorithm in C sharp. But before we write the algorithm, let's start by setting some things up as I usually like to do when talk about sorting algorithms. So what we will do is first an instance of the random class because what we want to do is we want to randomly generate numbers and populate them into an array. So we declare an array of integers numbers equals new int array. So that should be okay. And now let's also specify of course we want to have to we want to have an array of 10 elements. And now let's start populating this array. So it would be for int i equals zero. I is less than numbers dot length. And of course the iterator i plus plus. And what we want to do is numbers at the index i equal new, no, not new, but random dot next. And let's generate a number between 1 and 99. Sorry, if we want 99, we have to put 100 here. So this should work right now. So now we have populated the list. Let's also write it to the console. So console write line. Let's hear the sort the unsorted array is. And of course, afterwards, we want to do a for each var number in numbers. And for each number, we want to print it to the console on the same line. And that's why we use only console write. And of course, we want to add some spacing. So we need to add a space here. And that's it. Now we should print this array to the console. Let's also add a new line here, empty line, so that we could better see it. And also let's add the console read line at the end to make sure that we can keep the console open also after the output is displayed. And if you run this program right now, what we could see is normally the array of numbers that was generated. And in fact, we see here an unsorted array that contains 10 numbers. So we are good to go. The next step, of course, would be to call a method in which we will implement the selection sort algorithm. So let's selection sort. Let's also type it correctly. Selection sort. And we want to pass to the selection sort the array of numbers, of course. And we have a red squiggly line here because this method is not implemented. So let's implement it. And it's a private static void method. This should do it for now. Let's get rid of this throw new not implemented exception because what we want to do is here to implement this selection sort. So we said that we also need here two different loops like for any other simple sorting algorithm like bubble sort or insertion sort. So the first loop would be for int i equals zero. i should be less than array not array but numbers, sorry, numbers.length minus one of course because we don't want to get an error that we are outside of the bounds of the array and i++ we have to increase 
the counter here and that's it. Now we said we need also a second loop for int j equals and here is important when we start with j we always we take the first element let's suppose i is zero so the very first element is uh, in the array what we want to do is we want in the second loop to start comparing it of course with the second element because we won't compare it with itself so this is why j would start at i plus one and here also we could see j should be less than numbers dot length and in fact we don't need to here to add here length minus one because by the time we arrive at the last uh, at the last element of the array which is at index i uh, j which is i plus one would already be smaller or less than the length of the array so we won't get outside the bounds of the array so this is why we can leave it like that so of course we have to increase it and j plus plus okay there is one small thing that we want to add here first we said that we want always to keep track of the minimum and in this case let's declare an int min and let's make it i and this would be for the first iteration would be the first element in the let's say unsorted part of the remaining list and what we want to do here is of course start the comparison to do this we need of course an if statement because we have to evaluate a condition now what do we have to put in this if statement so we have to evaluate which number is smaller so if number at the position j is smaller than the number at the position min because there is where we want to store our minimum then of course min would be equal to j so that's it this is where we do the uh, evaluation and this is also how we keep track at which index we found the smallest number for each time we go through this loop and by the time we finish the second loop we know exactly for that specific iteration for the current index i which or at which position we have the smallest number so we can then go ahead and swap it with the number that we now know it's the smallest number so we will need to take the smallest number from where it is and put it at the position i so this is a normal swap similar to what we have seen in bubble sort or insertion sort so we would need a temporary variable which which would be equals to numbers of i then numbers of i so number at the position i would be equal to numbers at the position minimum where we know exactly that we have the smallest number and the number the new number at the position minimum so where the smallest number was before would be equal to temp and that's it we have done the swap and that should be it with this selection sort algorithm so by the time both loops finish we should have a sorted array of numbers so let's check out if this turns out to be true so what we would need to do here is let's say a console write line and here we want to add an information the sorted array of numbers is and then of course we need to loop through each number of the array and print it to the console so for each var number in numbers and what we want to do is console write and the number plus uh, just a little bit of spacing that should do it and i think we could run the program to check if this turns out to work correctly and we see here that we have the unsorted array of numbers and we have then the sorted array of numbers which is 3 27 27 30 52 54 69 74 77 96 so it works let's run the program once again with a new array of numbers 
and it's 226, 41, 56, 71, 73, 78, 87, 89 and 92. So we see that the array is once again sorted. So we can then say that we have implemented the selection sort algorithm in C sharp and it seems to work perfectly. As a short conclusion to selection sort, we have seen that it is fairly similar to what we've seen in bubble sort or insertion sort since we also have to use two loops here. And that's why these three algorithms are considered to be simple sorting algorithms. Still, in selection sort, the way we perform different actions, especially in the second loop, is slightly different to what we have seen in bubble sort or insertion sort and that's what makes selection sort to be different and this is very important. Now for newcomers to software development and to C Sharp I think it might be useful to go through all these three simple sorting algorithms and take note exactly how they should be implemented and the logic behind of them because the logic is more important than the code that you write. As you see the code is not something very complicated it's just a couple of for loops and a swap that we have to perform. Now, the only thing that is different between these three algorithms is the way we go through the second loop and how we do the swap. But it's important really to have a very good logical understanding on how these three algorithms are supposed to work. So if you haven't watched the videos on uh, bubble sort and dissension sort, please check them out. They are already on developer ramp up, so are ready for you to watch. And let me know if you maybe have any other ideas on how you can improve this uh, algorithm. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoy this channel and the content that we produce, then hit the subscribe button. It would be very useful for us to understand that our job is appreciated. And then we have also a bigger motivation to continue. Also, if you might know people around you that uh, would find this content useful, that are maybe new to software development or maybe they just want to start learn software development then feel free to share this video on your social networks and let your friends know about this content that you can find on developer ramp up also if you have any comments to make hit me with a comment i would be more than happy to reply to all your comments maybe you have some feedback on the videos that are already here on developer ramp up or maybe you have some ideas for topics that you want to have discussed and so on so just let me know once again, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.